So, today I thought I'd do a quick Helix tutorial on the new acoustic simulation patch uh, in the software. This has been an addition in Helix Update 3.0. By the way, 3.01 came out, which was just a patch of a few small bugs from 3.0. So if you don't have that yet, I definitely recommend upgrading to that one. It'll make your Helix unit a little bit more stable. In this video, I'm going to go through a couple recommended settings for getting the best sound out of the acoustic simulator patch. I also want to talk about uh, different playing techniques, how we can actually change our, our hands uh, to work with this thing. That's how you're going to get the best sound out of it, quite honestly. And then also I'm going to do a comparison with this patch uh, against an older acoustic simulation patch that I had done. You'll see it on the screen now. Uh, using an impulse response, uh, this is to use, again, an, an electric guitar to simulate an acoustic guitar. It's never going to be perfect, uh, but we can get pretty close, and in the context of a full band, I like to say that it's, it's going to be pretty negligible. About a year ago, around this time, I was working on a cruise ship, um, and on, on those ship gigs, you can only take one instrument with you. Most people only take one anyway. It's rare that I get an acoustic guitar part, but it does happen, uh, so for me, it doesn't make sense to bring a secondary instrument, but instead just try and kind of fake that sound. I did own the Boss AC2 for a while, but I ended up being so happy with the sounds that I could get out of the Helix that I just switched to using the HX Stomp. But anyway, the new acoustic simulator patch here, it's found in the EQ section. It's sought out to kind of try and emulate what the Boss AC2 does. You can see it even looks like a Boss pedal. So the first parameter adjustment you'll see here is mode. So we can set it to be a standard acoustic guitar, whatever they define by that, probably like an OM style acoustic. And then we've got a jumbo sized acoustic guitar, which is what I like to use. I think that sounds the best out of all these. And actually on the AC2, that was the mode that I used as well. Uh, then we've got an enhanced mode and then a piezo mode. And the piezo is meant to be used, I think, with an actual acoustic guitar just to kind of improve the sound of it. So uh, the other controls here go along with what we saw on the old AC2. Uh, we've got a body control, which controls a certain mid-notch filter, it kind of sounds like, and then the top end is kind of that airy, shimmery type tone. Shimmer is a, a bit of the same thing, a little bit different. But we'll walk through, explore all these controls now. And let's turn everything off just for a second so we can hear what this sounds like dry. That's the piezo mode. Here's Jumbo. Standard. You might not have thought those two sounded too different, uh, but I think the body control accounts for a lot of, of the difference between those two. So let's play with the body control a little bit right now. is a control that's made to kind of work with your own guitar and take your guitar's tone, whether it's a naturally dark sounding guitar like this, or maybe a brighter one like a Stratocaster. Uh, and this is how you can kind of tune the EQ of your guitar to fit a little bit more in the range of what an acoustic guitar should sound like. So with humbuckers, I generally turn it a little bit down. I forget what I had it said here at the beginning. It was around 4 or something, 3.9. I also prefer to use the middle selection here between the two pickups. Um, on my Strat style guitar, I also prefer to use the middle pickup alone. On this guitar, it's obviously, obviously both pickups here. I just find that that works well. If you want to switch to the neck, that can be a useful sound too. I would actually then drop the body control here just a little bit. Now the top end seems to kind of influence the, uh, the upper harmonics and that kind of shimmering, airy sound switch back to where I had it before. Close enough. can get out of hand pretty easily. Uh, so you want it to be bright enough that it, it, it fulfills the role of an acoustic guitar, but not overly bright that it sounds uh, unnatural, I think. Let me switch presets here just so it resets the controls and we'll play with the shimmer so you can hear what that sounds like. It 
it sounds like it introduces a little bit of a chorusing effect. That's cool. I had actually built this in on this preset previously. Uh, so let's go through and look at some of the other controls now. I've set an EQ block up here just to kind of do some further manipulating. And there's all the settings for that. Um, I did use a high cut here to tame some of the top end. So something I like to do with, with um, amp designing as well is I'll turn up one of the controls. Like if I want to get a more full sound, you can really crank the bass control and then correct for it later in the cab blocks. So you can pull up the low cut filter in the cabinet and that'll kind of make sure that it's not too bass heavy, that it's not you know really muddying up the mix too much. You're still getting plenty of full nice bass tone uh, because you've cranked the bass control in the preamp section of the amp. But then since you've cut it, cut the bass kind of frequency response a little bit in the cabinet, uh, now we've created a sound that is still usable. So this is a bit of what I've done with the EQ. I've cranked the top end to get a, a desirable tone and then I've cut it back just a little bit with the high cut. Something else I added was just a little bit of compression. And you'll see the gain control here on foot switch three. This is gonna let us know um, what the overall output volume is. So I've set this up two ways. I usually like to set up foot switch three in all my presets as a level control, uh, whether that can be a solo boost or in this case, it'll switch between whether you're really digging in or cutting back. So as the preset comes, when you pull this up, it'll be set up um, to compensate and add a little bit more gain to make up for the fact that you're playing a lighter, more sensitive part, maybe something that's finger-picked. And conversely, when you want to switch to strumming, um, we'll cut the gain down a little bit so when I press foot switch 3 it actually drops the volume underneath the general threshold of all my other presets and this is purposely to force you to dig in with your right hand uh, because if you look at the general envelope of an acoustic guitar versus an electric guitar an electric, electric guitar has uh, not such a sharp attack but rather a very smooth sustain to it where an acoustic guitar has a huge attack decays quickly sustains a little bit but not as long as an electric guitar would so in a way to kind of simulate the general envelope of an acoustic guitar, I like to dig in way harder on the electric. What you end up getting is a sound that I think is much more reminiscent of an acoustic guitar. So first off, let me pull the gain back up and I'll play lightly so you can hear what it sounds like. Now I'm gonna cut the volume and dig in more with my right hand. To me that ends up sounding more like an acoustic guitar should. Uh, although it's not perfect, it's never meant to, <laughs> and I don't think it'll ever replace a mic'd acoustic guitar. In the context of a full band, like I said, I think it's passable. So let's keep going. Let's look at some of the other blocks here. I've set up an always on reverb. Uh, it's just a short thing, not too much. If you want to turn that off, you can hear what it sounds like dry. A little bit higher decay for the room setting than I would normally do, but I've kept the mix low to compensate. Just gives it a little bit more space to work with, I think. And then let's look at the secondary reverb, and I've set this up with foot switch 2. Again, a pretty high decay. The mix isn't too bright, though. This will be great. Let's turn it on for some finger picking work. And then uh, we're also going to include here a 12 string emulation. Uh, so this is triggered with foot switch one. And actually this was an addition for Helix 3.0 as well. They added a bunch of new pitch shifting uh, effects here that are all really great. They work really great polyphonically. So that means that you can play more than one note and it's going to track pretty well. What I've done here is I've dialed it up a little bit, not too, not too heavy, so it's not so unnatural sounding. If you listen to a pitch shifted tone, it actually ends up shifting the transients and the harmonics of the guitar up too. And that's what can kind of make it sound digital, fake. Um, and what I've done is just kind of, I wanted to blend in a little bit of the, the pitched up sound, but not too much that it became apparent what was happening. And then with foot switch one, I also engaged this chorus block. 
because inevitably with a 12 string sound, you kind of get a little bit of coursing because the strings aren't perfectly in tune with their counterparts. So yeah, that's the preset basically. Let's take a second and compare this patch against my old one. So this is what I was using about a year ago when I was working on the ship. And man, I tried, this, this took me hours to come up with something that was usable. Versus what I was easily to pull up in probably about 45 minutes. The old one. And this is using an impulse response too of an actual acoustic. Versus the new patch. Way better. Great job Line 6. What a cool thing for them to put out a free update for everyone that's already bought the unit. Line 6 has already gotten their money, but they just keep putting out great updates for this thing. So yeah, there it is. I really don't have any use for an acoustic simulator patch right now. Um, though if I end up going on a gig and there's only one or two songs that I need an acoustic tone for, this will be a great thing for it. Obviously the ship gigs aren't coming back anytime soon. I think that industry is decimated. Uh, but there's the patch for you. Again, it's a free update to anyone that had purchased my preset library in the past. You can find a link in the description if you haven't gotten it yet. Uh, what you'll get is a link to a Google Drive folder, and that's my way of keeping you updated anytime I make new presets. You can also check out the free Line 6 Helix preset playlist. Uh, it's a playlist of all my Helix tutorials that include free presets. That's in the description. If you enjoyed this one but you don't want to purchase anything, the settings are all on the screen here. And you're welcome to create it for yourself at home on your own device. I also have some free presets on my website. So anyway, thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in again. If you enjoyed this video, leave me a comment. Feel free to ask any questions. I'm usually pretty good at getting back to you. Subscribe to the channel and stay tuned for more stuff from me and the Line 6 Helix. Thanks.